what do the crypto markets as a whole look like if we did go into a super cycle right now? What does that look like? What if we did? All right. So um, th there's a couple of things that I could see unfolding if that's the case. And, and okay. that is um, one, I mean, <clears throat> Bitcoin has hit an inflection point in, in terms of how much of its supply is available on exchanges. It is now going down and mm -hmm. it's going to trend down forever. And so that's why I do think a super cycle will one day come. I'm not entirely sold on that happening this time around, but yeah. this is something that's never happened before. It happened earlier this year to where the amount of, of Bitcoin available on exchanges reached a distinct peak. And now that's going down. And so you have Bitcoin where it's entering uncharted territory with its, its supply dynamics. Um, I do think that there's going to be a day in the future when somebody with let's say an institution with a billion dollars is going to have a very hard time actually buying a billion dollars worth of Bitcoin without massively driving the price up. And so, you know, you, you factor in those things, there's certainly a, a, a possibility, a scenario where that can happen. Um, and then another thing that I, I think would happen that would, would help this super cycle idea unfold is ETH 2.0. I mean, because ETH 2.0, if it happens, there, I'm, I'm seriously, I'm wondering that their ability to move from proof of work to proof of stake, that they're going to run into some roadblocks. I mean, they've already started talking about delaying it. They were going to launch it later this year, but now it's looking more like June of 2022. And so I've talked about this a lot. I'll, I'll have no problem mentioning it again. If they're able to successfully do that, I mean, the supply crunch that's coming with Ethereum makes Bitcoin supply crunch look insane. I mean, yeah. um, you know, going from 12,800 ETH mined per day to 1,280 in staking rewards, that's like a having on steroids. So if that can happen <laughs> anytime soon, I mean, Bitcoin plus ETH, the power of those two driving the rest of the market, sure, there could be a super cycle. So what if, yeah, yes, it could happen. Um, I'm a little skeptical that it's going to happen as, like we all want that to happen now, you know, we don't want to lose for Bitcoin to lose 80% of its value. Right. Um, but there's a, there's a world where that's, that possibility exists. I'll say that. So you think that, you, so, so you would think that if we did, if we did go into the super cycle as part of that, uh, ETH is going to go absolutely insane and then some as well. Oh, 100%. Yeah. Yeah. I've been like... Uh, up until like if ETH 2.0, let's just if it launched this year, I I've been telling people that I think ETH would peak, you know, above ten thousand dollars maybe in January and then hit some kind of a bear market bottom and then do a massive fake out, you know, bear market bottom at five thousand dollars or so, massive fake out and then have a second peak in twenty twenty three. Yeah. It just it all depends on the timing of that though, and so I'm I'm a little bit skeptical that they're they're going to get their stuff in order to make that happen to make that a reality soon miguel what uh what are your thoughts on uh on what if we did move into a super cycle so yeah i like i like alex was saying about the ethereum crunch right i like 100 agree with that and i believe the combination of both bitcoin and eth the supply shocks from both of these gigantic giants in the space will definitely cause some level of super cycle to happen right it's right. not a super cycle just for bitcoin and the alts get destroyed and you know they everybody forgets about them at the same time etfs for ethereum right that is coming yeah. that is the next yeah. level for institutional money to be getting into ethereum bitcoin's first because bitcoin is the most easiest thing to understand right digital gold the hedge against the dollar buy bitcoin long term you're solid Ethereum yeah. is a little bit more complicated, smart contracts, right? DApps, DeFi, NFTs. Mm -hmm. So it's a it's a short, it's a more it's a more complicated thing to wrap your head around when you come from the legacy system. But those ETFs for Ethereum will happen, and this combination of both ETH, Bitcoin and ETH, and ETH is going to definitely, I would believe, would definitely be the drivers of a super cycle for it. And the fact that the uh, the supply crunch, right? People holding e Ethereum for staking way longer periods of time at the same time yeah. where it has a burning effect, right? We're going to see less and less supply of Ethereum on exchanges, even yeah. though Ethereum doesn't have a fixed supply like Bitcoin does. It's definitely going to get scarce on exchanges. So, 
Yeah, man. Yeah. That's that's what I gotta say about that. My uh, my, my whole problem with uh, the the idea of a super cycle is just as is just as simple as um, we we're 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 moving we're moving into a time where these institutions are trying to take full on control of these markets and i think that if they let it get away from them that's when i think maybe you start heading towards a super cycle or or just way down the line like alex was talking about right i think the problem right now is they want to they want to play the game alex said uh, and, and and i think this is perfect Everybody was talking about, and I was talking about this a while ago as well, about volatility uh, slowing down because of the institution. I said, whoa, 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 wait a minute. Volatility is going to ramp up because these these institutions are here to play the game. We are Mm -hmm. playing T-ball. They are playing Major League Baseball. And as part of that, they are making money on the way up and the way down. So the problem with the super cycle theory is, in, in my estimation, is that they are at that point we are continuing to go up 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 right albeit slowly and they don't have that volatility to to play off of and make these huge no moves. wait but wait hold on, hold on see that's where i disagree right i disagree because i think the super cycle will create that hyper volatility because the super cycle is not going to be just bitcoin going up only right bitcoin is going to be going up 50 percent dropping 40 percent, but it's going to be a cycle up or nonetheless right it's going to be going i think the think super cycle will massive channel. yes it's going to i dot. think it's boom 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 boom. yes up, so but i think up. yes i think that the super cycle will cause this hyper volatility that we're talking about in this next bear market but instead of okay. being a bear market i think it's going to be a super cycle where we're going to see gigantic drops gigantic movements and that's going to be the super cycle everyone's going to think of it as a bear market but i think that's going to be the beginning of the super cycle how do you how do how do you how do you see that, Alex? If 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 we're playing into the idea of the super, do you do you do you see do you prescri- do you uh, describe it more like what what uh, Miguel is saying, or more just a slow term upward movement? Um, man, so there there's some things that Miguel said that I, I definitely resonate with. I mean, the ETFs are are a game changer. I mean, even this uh, this futures ETF, which I wasn't excited about at all, that launched on Tuesday. It's yeah. like the market makers have to buy spot Bitcoin, even with a futures ETF. And I I, I have read reports. I'm not entire. I need to do more research on this. That they had to add eight thousand Bitcoin to their holdings yesterday. Uh, really? I mean, so yeah. I mean, I, oh, I heard you know that. what? And the volume the volume didn't show that because it was an OTC deal, is what you're saying, yeah. right? Yeah. So. Um, you know, purpose Bitcoin ETF launched in Canada. They since their launch, which was only a few months ago, I think in February, they've added twenty two thousand Bitcoin to their holdings. The United States market is much larger. I want to say like twenty five times larger than Canada's. And so, what would that mean? Would that mean that a United States spot based ETF would add twenty five times the amount of Bitcoin to their holdings? That would be insane. I mean, how much is that? Twenty five times 20, that's 500,000 Bitcoin. I think that's right. Um, 25 times 20,000. No, I think it's, I don't know. Yeah, you're Somebody right. Else you're right. Math. You're, you're right. 500,000 exactly Bitcoin. Right. That's it. That's um, it. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Taking, taking 500,000 of the 2.1 million Bitcoin that's available on exchanges off of it. Um, that could yeah. do something crazy. And, you know, a United States state spot-based ETF and, and they're going to do how many, you know, how many of them are going to get approved eventually? I mean, I'm hearing yeah. things, I'm hearing rumblings that there's, there's going to be several that are about to be approved. So there, there's some credence to, to Miguel's ar- argument. Absolutely. Right. I'm still skeptical. <laughs> Sorry. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. I mean, I completely, I like, I, I'm saying I'm speaking for the super cycle, but I'm not 100% sold that this will happen. I just said that there's a very good possibility of it happening for these reasons, for the market makers, right? The institution of money wanting to break molds. And the fact that using the super cycle and creating this hyper volatility more than what we're seeing already will create more of a pause for retail because they say, look how look how volatile it is. It's very risky for you guys to get in. It's not safe, right? Because if you go into a two, three year bear market where it's pretty much dead, they can't be saying it's too volatile because they had a an eighty percent retracement over over three years, right? But when you start talking about every every three or four months having hyper volatility up and down, 
like where we saw in May, then we're jumping back up now, and then we jump even further in December, and then February, January, February, March, we're dropping low again, and then by you know maybe next August, we're pumping it crazy again. They're gonna start saying, "Hey, you know, this is way more volatile than ever now." So you gotta be very yeah. careful. You know, smart money, institutional money is not gonna make it any safer for you, bro. They're still packing their bags.